Good morning and welcome to Christ United. We're so glad to have you here in modern worship with us. We would love to know that you're here. You can check in by scanning the QR code or by using one of the paper check-in sheets in the seat back in front of you. Children are an important part of worship here at Christ United and in the back, you can also grab a children's activity bag from the wall. If you're interested in learning more about our church or any upcoming events, please visit the Connect Center in the atrium. We're so glad to have you here with us in worship today. Good morning. Happy back to school Sunday. I cannot believe this school is already here. Um, summer is over, sad, sad. But we're so happy that you are here us this Sunday, and we're so happy to have all of our friends online. If you are able, in body or in spirit, will you stand and join us in worship today?
watching if you can. He's moving on the way. The dawn is breaking. Oh, lift your eyes to see. He's better than your dream. And everything you lost, love's returning. Love's returning.
once again that we are not alone, that we do not do this alone. You break every chain. You are with us every step and every breath. Help us to know that deep in our bones today, God, as we sing a new song to you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can have a seat. Well, good morning. It is such a joy to be with you today. My name is Julie Henson, and I have the great joy and privilege of being the pastor to this wonderful modern worship community. If this is your first time with us, we want to know that you are here today. And so there is a packet on the each end of each row. If you will just take that and pass it down the row this morning, let me know that you are here today. If you're not a first-time guest, still let me know that you're here so that we can get to know one another in the weeks ahead. A couple of things that are coming up, if you can believe it, it is already August, today is back to school. Something coming up in August that I want to draw your attention to, Chris and Whitney, our senior pastor, Chris Dowd, is leading a study for parents of youth called Three Questions. And it's going to be a wonderful time for our youth parents to dive into these questions that may spark richer conversations with your teenagers. What are the conversations that we need to be having? How can we have those conversations? Chris and Whitney are in the midst of all of that with their two teenage boys. And so it's going to be a wonderful time. And so if you know someone or if you yourself fit that particular category of a youth parent, this is a great opportunity to dive in and plug in as we start the new year. And then in just a couple of weeks, three weeks, we are going to have our third grade Bible celebration. And so if you have a third grader or if you know a third grader, we would love to present them with a Bible on August 22nd or 27th. And so if you will just take a moment, there's a registration for that on our children's page. And so you can go and fill out the registration for that and click modern and we will have the Bible presentation here in our wonderful modern worship service. And then finally, and uh, next week, we are going to start something a little bit different. Um, we are going to do something called Meet the Pastor. You know, I wanted to um, name it um, Pasta with the Pasta, but um, nobody else thought that was as funny as I did, and I just really like noodles. But we're just going to do pizza instead. But I want a chance to get to know you, and I want a chance to get to hear about your thoughts and dreams for this incredible community, and I want to get to tell you a little bit more about myself as well. So next Sunday, right after worship, if you will just go to our website, um, it says uh, cumc.com slash worship, you'll find a registration. I just need to know how much pizza to order. So it's really informal. You can come even if you didn't sign up, but just take a moment if you can and let me know if you're coming. That way I can have enough pizza for us next week. It's going to be a great time after worship just to get to hang out and get to know each other. Well, it is a really special Sunday today. Today we have our back to school Sunday and our promotion Sunday. And so we want to take a minute to celebrate 
all of the teachers and the administrators and the custodians and cross guards, everyone who is involved in our school system because it is a calling and it is one that we are deeply appreciative and grateful for. So what we want to do today, if you're willing, is if you are or were a teacher or an administrative staff, custodian, a cross guard, if you are involved in the school system at all or were and are now retired, would you just take a minute and stand so that we can say a word of gratitude to you? At the back of the room as you go out today, we have a very special uh, magnet that has a prayer on it from Ephesians 3. And so as you go out today, grab one of those. As you go back to school, you can put it on your filing cabinet or your whiteboard or on your fridge at home. Just something for you to know that your church family is praying for you and is praying that you have a wonderful year and that you feel God's joy and love as you teach um, our wonderful students. So we have a call to worship that is also part of this Back to School Sunday. So will you join me in saying our call to worship today? At the beginning of a new school year, O oh God of wisdom, we offer thanks and praise for the gift of new beginnings and for the opportunity to learn and to wonder. We pray for teachers, students, administration, nurses, custodial staff, crosswalk guards, and all other staff. We pray that this year might be rewarding for all. Be with us as we face the challenge of new tasks, the fear of failure, the expectations of parents, friends, and self. In our learning and our teaching, may we grow in service to others and in love for your world through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue in worship today through a time of offering, and we do that as part of our worship service because it is the recognition that giving is a part of our worship, giving back to God for all that God has given to us. There are many ways to give here at Christ United Methodist Church. You can give online or through Venmo. You can also give through the offering baskets that will be um, passed around here in just a minute. Speaking of schools, we want to celebrate today what we have done through our own giving in the past month. We have given out over 800 supplies and in our donations that we did in July. That filled over 75 backpacks that went to our serving ministry on our Serve on the Go days. And so I wanna say thank you to you for donating, for being part of that, for assembling. When we give in that way, we recognize that we are part of a community and that community leans on us and we to say to that community that you matter to us. So thank you for giving in that way. Let us worship through our gifts. The creation suddenly articulate with a thousand tongues to lift one cry. From north to south and east to west, we hear Christ be magnified. From rivers to the mountain tops, we hear Christ be magnified. Oh, Christ be magnified. Let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified. The altar of my life, Christ be magnified in me. Mm -hmm. 
That's right. Seen, known, loved. Can you say that with me? Seen, known, loved. We decided for these three words to be what you see every single day when you see this sticker so that you know that there is someone who sees you, someone who knows you, and someone who loves you. Can you guess who that is? God, that's right. Now I'm sure, that's right, and Jesus. And now I'm sure your parents do too and your friends and your family. And so every time you see this sticker, what I want you to remember is that God sees you, God knows you, and God loves you. What about the arm of the Titanic? What about the what of the Titanic? The Titanic that goes to the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, you know, God sees them and knows them and loves them too. Okay, so we have a very special prayer that we want to say today that is going to be on the screen. So I'm going to turn around so that we can pray that prayer together. All right, here we go. God, our creator, for these children who will be experiencing a new school year, and we all say, we ask for your blessings on their backpacks that will go with them each day. We ask for your blessings on their minds that will grow with knowledge and curiosity. We ask for your blessings. On their hearts that will grow in compassion and kindness. We ask for your blessings. On their schools that will be a safe place of learning and comfort. We ask for your blessings. God of all, be with all students that through your guidance, they may know that they are your beloved children. Amen. That you will know more than anything that God loves you, okay? All right, so I have a sticker for each one of you. So you're going to come up and get one from me. Can somebody help me pass them out? Okay. There you go. You want to come help pass them out? There you go. There you go. We all have a great school year. You're starting kindergarten. That's so exciting. I'm going to first grade. And first grade? Okay, now once you've got your sticker, you can take it and put it in your backpack or keep it with you, and you can go back to your seats. Thank you, guys. Did everybody get one? I bet your mom can help show you how to put the sticker on. They're a little bit tricky. stickers at the back. Um, if you know of another kiddo that you would like to give one of those to, you can pick one up on your way out. So has anybody ever felt like that video describes them or a season of their life or a time when things just seemed stressful? You know that phrase, the struggle is real? I found myself in a season of my life saying that a lot. You know, I didn't want to just get into it with every person who asked. I would just say, oh, you know, the struggle is real, meaning things are hard. Things can be really difficult. I was having one of those days yesterday where I was a little bit on the struggle bus. Um, if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you maybe saw a picture of me with a bunch of balloons because it's back to school Sunday. And balloons are really fun until they're not. And I got into a little bit of a fight with some balloons, trying to get them all into a car. I looked like a cartoon character at Party City, trying to fit them all into my husband's small little Mazda. And I mean, I was like, there's no way. I'm not coming back. Nope, they're all getting in. And so I pushed and I shoved and I kicked and I smushed. And then when worse came to worse, I even popped some of them. Just, you are going in the car. And I was a little bit on the struggle bus. And by the time I got home yesterday, I was tired and I was exhausted. And that good kind of exhausted when you've been working on something really hard and you're really excited for something, but you're also just tired. And I got home and my husband said, hey, how are you? And I said, I'm so tired I could cry, but I'm too tired to cry. 
and my son walks into the room, and three weeks ago now, when he was here, we sang a song called We Make Space, and y'all, that has become my kid's jam. It is the only song he listens to. Now, I will also tell you that um, I made what I thought was a really sweet decision a couple of days ago. It ended up being an actually, like, really difficult decision. Um, the live version on Apple Music and Spotify is 12 minutes long. And so I said, do you want to hear Miss, Miss Paris sing it? He said, yes, Miss Paris. So then we got to watch the service, and I'd pull up the service. So now every time we listen to it, he goes, I want to hear Miss Paris. Where's Mr. Mason? And so yesterday I got home, and I'm tired, and I'm exhausted, and my kid comes into the room in his sweet little three-year-old voice and says, oh, come and take up residence. Jesus, Jesus, welcome in. We make space. We make room. We have come to welcome you. In the tears that I thought I was too tired to cry, I finally began to cry. And my husband said, just in case you needed the little reminder that what you do matters, or that God's at work, it does matter. He sings those words every single day now. And I, I gotta be honest with you, I'm kinda sick of the song. But I need that reminder every single day, like the mantras in our life that God, there's space for you. God, in the midst of all of the clutter and the chaos, there is space for you. There are words and songs in our lives that are like mantras. Things that we say or things that we know by heart that become part of what we hear even in our minds every single day. Now, we, what we may not know is that those things that we hear and those things that we see and those things that we say every single day, the more often in routine that we say them, then become part of who we are. They become part of the rhythm of our life. They become part of the people that we are and the people that we want to be. So today we're reading a very familiar verse that you've probably actually seen stitched on a bunch of pillows. You've maybe, you maybe even have it hanging in your house somewhere. So we'll get to that here in just a second. But our scripture comes from the book of Joshua today. Now Joshua comes right after Exodus in the Old Testament. So here's what's happened so far in the Old Testament. We've got Adam and Eve and we've got the people of God who have developed and been created and they have turned away from God. They've ended up in slavery in Egypt and Moses goes to Egypt and tells Pharaoh, let my people go, right? You remember that song? You remember Moses helping the people get out of Egypt? And so they cross the Red Sea, they get out of Egypt, and they wander for 40 years, an entire generation in the wilderness. They become wilderness wanderers. Well, while they are there, Moses, from God, chooses a predecessor chooses a man by the name of Joshua to take his place, to take his place in leadership once Moses is gone. And so Joshua takes over, and he actually takes over during this time of wilderness. And then when we get into the book of Joshua, there is this transition from wilderness wanderers to people who have settled in this new land, the land that God calls the promised land. And so where we're reading with Joshua, we hear about this battle of Jericho where God tells Joshua for them to walk around the city for seven days and on the seventh day to blow the horns and the walls came down. As they are moving out of the wilderness into settlement, they are conquering different lands going into this new time. And where we meet up with Joshua today is very similar to where we find ourselves in the season today. Going from wilderness wanderers of the summer back to routine and being settled into the fall. Now, there's a lot of excitement and a lot of joy and a lot of exhale in that. But there's also a lot of stress involved in that. There's a lot of struggle in that. There's some fear in that. There's some concerns in that. There's the recognition of a passage of time with our students in that. And that can be a struggle. So Joshua today is talking to the people of God who are coming out of the wilderness and into the new conquered promised land. And your um, bulletin says that we're going to read a lot of scripture today. We're actually not. We're going to start in chapter 23, 
from verse 14 just to give us some context and then we'll move a little bit further. In verse 14 it says, and now I am about to go the way of all the earth and you know in your hearts and souls, all of you, that not one thing has failed of all the good things that the Lord your God promised concerning you. All have come to pass for you. Not one of them has failed. But just as the, all the good things that the Lord your God promised concerning you have been fulfilled for you, so the Lord will bring upon you all the bad things until he has destroyed you from this good land that the Lord your God has given you. If you transgress the covenant of the Lord, which, enjoined on, which he enjoined on you, and go and serve other gods and bow down to them, then the anger of the Lord will be kindled against you. And you shall perish quickly from the good land that he has given you. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads of the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. So we meet up with Joshua and the Israelites during this pivotal moment when he is uh, talking to them about this new area and this new season that they have become part of. They are settled in this new land. Now, this new land has a lot of new people in it, people that are already settled there before they got there. And these people worship different gods than the God of Israel. And so what Joshua is saying to these people is, do you remember all the things that God has already done for you? You've got to make a decision in this new land and in this new season and even in your struggles, you've got to make a decision about who you're going to worship and who you're going to serve. Because this land is going to tell you that there's more than one option. There are several gods that you can worship. But you have to decide, will you continue to follow the God that made a covenant with you? There's two words that I want to give you today, and the first one is that word covenant. Can you say covenant? Covenant. This is the word that we hear in the scripture for Joshua. Joshua is saying to the people, have you forgotten the covenant that God has made for you? Now, what is a covenant? It's a promise. God has made a promise, and God continues to make that promise as if it's a verb. God continues to fulfill that promise, continuing to be willing to turn towards the Israelites, even when they turn away from God. A covenant is a promise. It's different than a contract because it's not transactional. How often do we find in our relationships that we are interested in more of a transaction, in more of a contract? We get very consumer-focused where I give you something and you give me something in return. But a covenant says, I give you something regardless of what I get in return, regardless of what you do with it, regardless of whether you deserve it. That's what God's covenant is with us. It's a promise to the people of Israel, the people of God, that God will always turn towards us. God will always give towards us, even when we do not return that covenant. So we see this covenant here, and this reminder of the covenant. And then there's this turning point here, and we're going to read in chapter 24, all the verses that we're skipping today, if you're looking on in your Bible, I want you to go back and read some of those. It's long, but I think it's so important because what Joshua does is he then gives the history, what's called the salvation history, from the time of creation up to this point. He gives a history lesson of where God has been covenant, where God has continued to be in covenant with the Israelites. And then starting in verse um, 13 is where we're going to pick up. So he talks about all the places where God has continued to save the Israelites, where God's covenant has been renewed, where God fulfills God's promises to us. And then there is this shift. And Joshua talks about a choice that we have to make. Starting in verse 13 of chapter 24, it says, I gave you a land on which you had not labored and towns that you had not built, and you live in them. You eat the fruits of vineyards and olive yards that you did not plant. Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. 
Now, if you were unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your ancestors served in the region beyond the river of the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Have you seen that on a plaque somewhere? Maybe you have it in your own house. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua goes from talking about the promise that God has made to us and instead talks about a choice now that we have to make. God has made covenant with us and that now leaves us with a choice. And you hear this mantra. Everyone else can do what they want to do, but for me, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, I'm not somebody who's um, super uh, into house decorating, but you've probably seen this in many different places, pillows and on plaques. And I wondered today if there was a mantra that you would say that you live by that is as distinct as the one that Joshua talks about here. What would your mantra be? What would your mantra say? What are the words that you would live by or that you say that you live by? For Joshua, it's as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He's very clear, though, in this section of scripture that this choice might actually require courage. That's the second word for you today. Can you say courage? Courage. We have to make a choice. And that choice may not be easy. And it might take a little bit of courage. There's a distinction today, though, between daily courage and heroic courage. Oftentimes what we hear about is the heroic courage, the person who runs into the building that's on fire, the person who saves the person drowning, the hero that goes out into a battle. We hear about these heroes, but oftentimes what we don't hear is all of the daily heroes that go to work over and over again. The routine they put themselves in so that when that moment of courage comes, they are ready. Think about firefighters. Firefighters show up to every single fire regardless of the fire, regardless of where it is, and regardless of how dangerous it is. And it is in that routine of going every single day that we find the hero. I wonder today what everyday courage could look like for us as we go back to school. As we go into the fall and as we think about this new season of our life, what might our mantra be? And will we have the courage to live into it every day? What's the covenant that you need to make with God today? And how might you live into it in the days ahead and in this year ahead. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The serenity prayer says that beautiful line, grant me the courage to change the things I can. Oftentimes when I think of what is serene or the serenity prayer, I don't think of that word courage as part of it. But part of that prayer is grant me courage to change. Today, what Joshua is telling the people of God is that there are many different gods that you can worship. Now, that idea might seem antiquated to us today. Different idols, different gods. But if we're being honest and if we really took a look at the things in our lives, I think there's some different gods that we could name. I can name a few today because they're ones that are real in my life. Maybe we need to stop worshiping at the feet of the God of convenience and comfort. Convenience and comfort. Those are gods in our lives that constantly are beckoning towards us. And yet the God that we worship is a God of change, a God of new beginnings, a God that is always looking to use us and do something through us. But we can't be people who go about that work if we are worshiping at the feet of the gods of convenience and comfort. Grant me the courage to change. So I wonder today what your mantra might be. 
I wonder today even what our mantra as a community of faith might be. Because whether you realize it or not, and whether you are aware of it or not, your actions probably have a mantra and say something about you. Every year when I would uh, go back to school, I was always very focused on what my new identity was going to be, what a, who I was going to be, what I was going to do, what did I want to accomplish. I was very goal-driven, especially in school. And I, had a, um, I have a birthday at the end of July, and so my mom and I would always go back to school shopping. And so I can tell you in every different grade, when I see the school picture, I can tell you what my first day of school outfit was. Yeah, because that was important. And I could tell you what in my mind was most important to me that year. Whether it was volleyball or theater or student council, I always had something that was really, really important to me. Now, most of the time, I never said it out loud. But I said in the way that I acted, what was important to me. What will we say in our actions this year that is important to us? This is why we are gathering together after worship next week on the 13th. We're calling it Meet the Pastor because I'm new and it sounds like a good enough title, I guess. I still like pasta with pasta. Um, but it's an opportunity for us to say, who are we going to be? As a community of faith, who do we say we are? Not what do we do when we gather each week, but who are we? What is our identity? And what is the covenant that we are making with one another and for this community when we come and worship together? Today, as we come to the table of communion, I want to give you an opportunity through communion today to think about what your word or your mantra, or dare I say it, your covenant might be this year. And I want to invite you to write it down. Write it down and put it somewhere where you will see it every day. Write it down so you can see it, and maybe in some everyday way and routine, it might change your life. You might utilize it in some way. You might make the daily choice to make a covenant with God and serve the Lord. So we come to the table of communion today, and that word communion means to come into union with God. So we come into union with God, and we come into union with one another. And what you will hear in the liturgy, or the words that I'm going to speak, is we remember the last supper that Jesus had with his disciples. He gathered with those disciples, and during a very ordinary meal, when they gathered for a meal called Passover, Jesus stopped what was going on, and he took a loaf of bread, and he broke it. And he gave it to those friends and he said, take and eat, this is my body and it's given for you. And in this daily, ordinary thing, every time you eat it, remember me. That word remember, re-member means to put the pieces back together. Every time you eat this meal, you remember who God is and who God has called you to be. And then after that meal, when the supper was over, he took a cup and he gave thanks to God and he gave it to those friends, those disciples and said, let's drink from this, all of us, because this is the blood of my new covenant, my new promise for you to love God with your whole my heart, mind, soul, and strength and to love your neighbor as you love yourself. This is that new covenant. And every time you drink it, it has been poured out for you and for everyone, for the forgiveness of sins. And as often as you drink this ordinary thing, remember me. Remember my promises for you. As we come into this time of communion today, we're going to sing a song called The Goodness of God. It's one of my favorite songs, but I'll admit to you, it's not a song that um, was my favorite up until about a month ago. Um, this is my mom's favorite song. And when I went to Colorado a couple, a couple weeks ago, my husband and I lead worship for them in their small church in Colorado, and she wanted us to sing this. And I was just so frustrated with her. My mom has metastatic breast cancer, 
And right now she has, um, she's going through treatments um, for cancer that is in her tailbone and her hip. Um, the treatments are going really well, but she's in a lot of pain. And every day when she walks, she's in pain. When I was with her, she had just done radiation and it was hard to even swallow. And I could not quite fathom how my mom, who was going through this constant pain, could say that her favorite song was this song that talked about the goodness of God. And so I just was honest with her. I said, Mom, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get how you can talk about the goodness of God. And she showed me this video of this woman singing the song beautifully. And as she's singing the song, her husband comes in and her children come in and her grandson comes in. And my mom starts to cry and I start to cry. And she said, Julie, that is God's goodness. It doesn't have to be extraordinary. It doesn't mean that everything is easy or even okay, but it does mean that God is good and God is faithful. So as we sing this song today, I'm reminded of my mom's covenant, of the faithfulness and the goodness of God, and that even when the days are hard, I will sing of the goodness of God. You will be invited to come to these tables and to kneel, to take and eat a piece of bread and drink from the cup, and to maybe stay for a few minutes and pray about the words and the mantra, the covenant that maybe you will make this year. Let me pray for us. God, as we go into this time of communion, we ask that your Holy Spirit be poured out on us and on these gifts of bread and cup, and that you make it be for us, the body of Christ, so that we may be your body in this world. God, it is by your Spirit that we become one one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Let your Holy Spirit guide us during this time, O oh God, as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You are invited to come forward and receive communion. Your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. Oh, I will sing of the goodness. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made, oh, I will sing of the goodness.
Thank you. 